Hello, welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep dot com. My name is Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. Close your eyes now and go to sleep. That is it. That's the end of the session. So, no, it's not really. So, yeah, here we are again. And <laughs> I'm giggling to myself because in my last Let Me Boy to Sleep, I said I was going to be online, live at 12 o'clock UK time every night and I'm not going to be doing that it wasn't a lie it was uh, I meant it at the time but I'll be honest with you I can't be bothered to (laughs) to kind of I have to make these recordings when I'm in the mood that's the bottom line and if I'm not in the mood then I'm not going to do it last night I was in the mood for doing it but 12 o'clock today I wasn't I'm doing it now and it's 5.26am and I'm in the mood I'm proper in the mood yeah so there's no point me doing it if I'm not I can't force my I can't force myself to to make recordings not these type of ones I can kind I kind of can do a hypnosis session um without being in a kind of a particular mood although I still need to want to do it but then I do want to do it I do you know I want to make more recordings and I actually tonight or during the night this is my fourth recording, can you believe? I did a deep sleep whisper recording, then which was 20 minutes long, or 22 minutes long. I did uh, my sleep hypnosis weekly, which was about 42, 43 minutes long. Then I did a episode for the relaxation hypnosis for stress anxiety and panic attacks which was about 53 minutes long and now I'm doing this so there you go It's not an average day, but I have spent a lot of the day in bed, like kind of the whole day. I think I woke up about five this afternoon while I was woken up, I had my breakfast. And then I was back in bed about six, half six. And then I got up about half ten. And I went to the garage. I bought a a sandwich. A 
Jamie Oliver sandwich. A meal deal that they do. And I've, I've been up since. Making the recordings and watching a bit of telly and listening to a bit of radio and working on my website, you know, stuff like that. I got quite a lot of work done on my websites yesterday. But I realised something about myself. And I, I don't want to generalise this to other people because I don't know. But I realised that I can't go to bed hungry. Like really hungry. Because first of all my stomach rumbles. And secondly last night or early hours of the morning I was actually felt like I was fainting. while I was in bed so I ended up getting up having a bowl of breakfast cereal waiting a little while and then going back to bed and then I was fine so from now on I'm not going to bed I'm not going to go to bed on a full stomach because that's not really something either that's a good idea I don't think although I have gone to bed after eating in the past but usually for a nap you know not for like proper sleep or maybe I lie down in my chair lay back and have a little kip but that's sleep that is kip it's not short for kipper it's had a kipper I have a nice a nice, nice, uh, not ro not roasted kipper. What do they do? Smoked. They smoke kippers. I've never had kipper for breakfast. Never had a kipper. I like saying the word kipper. I think that's going to be my new favourite thing. Just saying kipper. I might actually start calling people kipper. Hello, kipper. You're right, Kipper? Yeah, Kipper. Just call everybody by the same name. You're right, Kipper? And people will get used to me being the Kipper Man. Yes, yeah, so that's the Kipper Man. Why do you call him the Kipper Man? Because he calls everyone Kipper. Why do you call everyone Kipper? Because he's a Kipper Man. Of course. So that would be weird. So I won't do that, but Kipper. Kipper. Yeah, I like the word kipper. I like pants. Pants is quite a weird word. Tortoise. Some, some people call them tortoise. It's a tortoise. Tortoise. And here's a question I've got for my American audience. I like to sometimes comment on the differences between English and American, like maybe the pronunciation of words or pronunciation of words that differs between us. And this is a different thing though. See, I, I love, I think probably, I would say probably 80% of my favourite programmes like sitcoms maybe 70% is American and I've talked about this before and I love Cheers Frasier and Roseanne uh, Will and Grace The Golden Girls because on a Friday on Channel 4 here at a time when there was only four channels channel four being the fourth one and they Friday night was comedy night but it was mainly 
American comedy for about two hours and then it'd move into like English stuff uh, there used to be a program on in the 90s called The Word and there was another program on called Eurotrash I think that used to be on on Friday evenings as well but the American shows I don't think there was one American sitcom that I didn't love and I watched every single one of them um, everyone everyone that they showed but what surprised me is there's sitcoms that as far as I'm aware of have never been on in the evening either peak time or even late um, that I've seen that were really popular in America but we never got to see them and they show them early morning you know like 6 o'clock in the morning onwards on channel 4 and this is not a new thing this is something that I remember I went through a period because I used to work early I used to have to get up early in the morning in the early 90s and sometimes I'd wake up because because of the bipolar I've always I didn't know it was bipolar back then but I've gone through periods when I didn't need hardly any sleep it's not so much manic but you know um, I forget the word but it's kind of below that but it's being full of energy and being up in a good mood and not not needing sleep and I can get like that even now so it wasn't an age thing it wasn't just because I was young although that probably helped so I went through periods when I'd like sometimes for weeks on end months even it was quite weird but and I'd wake up really early so I'd go to bed 11 o'clock in the evening knowing that I had to wake up at 7 or half six or something like that but I'd wake up at four and I'd be wide awake and I was happy you know and I'd turn the television on and I'd watch TV shows that I'd never seen before that had me in hysterics admittedly I probably would have laughed at anything because I was in a really good mood but it, I know that I was also watching really brilliant comedy just because I've always been aware of I've always been able to sort of research that thing and you know a bit harder in those days but um, you know I asked around sort of some of the older generation at that time there was a TV show called Soap as in S-O-A-P the thing that I don't like to touch my body with and the it had something is Stephen Mulligan or something Mulligan and it also had a young what's his name he was in he was in that film very famous actor, as comedian as well, is in the film City Slickers. He was the star of that. Billy Crystal, that's it, Billy Crystal. And, oh, he, he was in another film, Mr. Saturday. And he said, uh, he had the catchphrase in that film. What was it? Because I had a girlfriend at the time. 
I found someone that was willing to hold my hand and we watched this film called Mr. Saturday this was about 1994 I think it was his phrase was don't get me started on that or something like that but it was funny um, but he was like a it's about him he's an entertainer and stuff in it but it's a good film I've not seen seen it on television for 20 odd years so and I think it was on video that we got it because we used to send a little child she had a little kid we used to send them to the video shop to get videos because well, there was no chimneys for him to climb and clean so we couldn't make any money out of him cleaning chimneys so we just got him to go to the video shop and get videos for us that was her that's what she said and um, what is it it was a really good film but Billy Crystal was in this show called Soap and but he was young really young big hair a lot of hair and it was basically I suppose making fun of soap operas but what it was making fun of I mean for English people I can only talk for myself but I've been a television buff all my life so you know I've I've seen most things that are on television at least once so I know all the top soaps and like American soaps I used to watch them like Falcon's Crest Dallas of course Dynasty or Dynasty depending on how you want to pronounce it uh, what other ones was there and if you're in America you might be thinking what a young and a restless there's really well we didn't have those so we didn't get the really good ones and when I say the really good ones from my understanding some of those soaps in America are so bad that they're good like the plot lines are so ridiculous that it's entertaining really entertaining and I wish we did have that stuff because I'd love to watch it because I mean, Dallas was good it was funny because of JR take JR out of it and apart from Sue Ellen being drunk there wasn't huge humour the only thing I couldn't understand is why the man from Atlantis suddenly didn't have to live in a swimming pool anymore. So that, that I couldn't understand that bit. And with Dynasty, that was kind of more of an up, upper class, posh, kind of... I watched it, but I didn't probably didn't enjoy it the same way as I did with Dallas but I was a kid and I probably didn't really understand a lot of what was going on but Dallas was definitely the the number one soap like for America Falcon's Crest there was another one as well wasn't there it wasn't Falcon's Crest a, a follow up from Dynasty wasn't it like a, an extension some of the characters and there was another one as well but I forget what it's called I used to watch Murder She Wrote all the time well every Friday when it was on Heart to Heart that's another sh American show I used to watch when I was a kid but with the soaps or the, the comedies rather and soap never ever saw that on telly and maybe it was on and I was just too young to see it maybe it was on like yeah 10 o'clock at night or something and I was in bed 
But anyway, I watched, used to watch this early in the morning. It was on like four, four o'clock in the morning, 4.35. And then Cheers would be on. Because at that point, I think Cheers had finished, I think. And it used to be such a brilliant start to the day. I'd, and that soap was so funny. And even now, I probably didn't understand all the references because it was, I'm guessing, I haven't seen it since, but I'm guessing it was a, uh, like making fun of the American soap operas. But it was just funny in its own way anyway. It was just hilarious. Another show I thought, one of my favourite TV shows, comedies ever, was, I think it was 1980, uh, 1987. I used to watch this when I worked in a chip shop. Not while I was working in a chip shop, because... I was dedicated. I'm a dedicated friar, I was. And uh, by friar, I don't mean big, fat, with a bald patch. Not there now, possibly. Oh my gosh, I've turned into an actual friar. I just need to wear the brown cloak. I don't think I've got a bald patch, but I've got a thinning on the top of the head. The crown, is it the crown? The yeah, the like the back of the head is thinning. So if I put my hand, my fingers on it now, so I can stroke it with my hand, and I can just feel, feel the end, and the end's quite soft and smooth, like the the middle bit, and I can stroke around the end. And I can kind of, if I go down a bit, I can pull the hairs apart. And I could feel the skin. So it's thinner. And I didn't realise until, I think it was last year, or maybe the year before, I was making a video and I turned my head. Maybe, I think I went to pick Andre up from the floor because that's where he often is and uh, I replayed the video back and I saw this the top of my head and I'll be honest I didn't I didn't set fireworks off with with excitement it was it wasn't a it wasn't a terrible moment in my life, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, better write that in my diary, or perhaps I'll write a poem about it, oh, I don't care about my hair going, as long as I don't have to have the ball patch showing, me, 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 so yeah, I wasn't pleased about that, I actually had my hair cut, I think it was about four years ago, I remember I had my hair cut and I often do it myself now, I just shave it off. And which is quite weird when you consider I'm what I'm concerned about a bald patch, but I'm happy to shave it all off and be bald all over. It's weird, isn't it? It's just uh I don't think being bald really suits me and not having a beard doesn't really suit me. And having a beard doesn't really suit me. So I'm not quite sure where to go with that. And I'm thinking maybe just rub jam all over my face. Maybe that that would look better. You know? It's just... So at least... Because I, I shaved my beard off the other day. So I've got this new razor. And it's uh, Philips One Shave. I think it's called... And it's got all these, it's basically like, a, it's, well, it is an electric razor, but you can use it in the shower or in the bath. Not plugged in, obviously, but 
you can use it um, as a wet shave as well as a dry shave. So I thought, I'll trim my beard. And then I thought, well, I've got my t-shirt on. And then I thought, well, what's that, what's that got to do with shaving my beard? And I thought, well, yeah, but if the hairs go all over my t-shirt, and then I'll just make a mess everywhere. And I thought, well, I could just change a t-shirt, can't I? And then I thought, well, yeah, I suppose. So that's kind of the end of that process. And so I, f I went into the hallway and I was shaving my beard. And then I thought, well, why don't I just do this in the bathroom? Because there was all these hairs piling up. I was worried if they got in front of the door, it'd be difficult to get to the front door because there was a lot of hair. It was, honestly, it's, it was a big old beard I had. And then, I kind of did go into the bathroom. And I shaved it all off. I didn't just trim it. I shaved the entire thing off. And it was quite a close shave, considering I had a beard trimmer before and it was never close. But this is close, like a, the closest thing to a, like a wet shave. Now imagine if I'd done it with a wet shave and foam, it would have been closer to, you know, closer shave. And it was a shave, it's not like it wasn't close to a shave. You know, it was nearly a shave, but it wasn't quite. It was an actual shave, you know, but it just wasn't close. As in, uh, I can't even, but if you don't understand, why am I explaining it? And oh, then I oh, went down the road, I thought I've been down this road many times. It uh, leads to the park and uh, cross over, gets me to the bus stop. Um, no, no, forget that. So I went, uh, I, I trimmed my sideburns. Sideburns, why are they called burns? Sideburns. Anyway, I trimmed them. Yep, I could not get them the same length. And I thought, if this keeps going on, I'm going to end up having to shave my entire head, which I didn't want to do. Although I'm thinking about, well, now I am, I wasn't before, I'm thinking about having a Mohican. That'd be quite a cool haircut, wouldn't it? Have a little Mohican. I've never had one of those before, I don't think. Maybe colour it green. So uh, I get my Mohican, colour it green, and I can go into town and just look at people and say, what are you looking at? Why are you looking at me? Why are you looking at me? What's everyone looking at? What's everyone staring at me? Yeah. But still I could wear like deep sea diver flippers walk around there and maybe stick a bowler hat on my head and just start shouting at people why are you looking at me why are you looking at me yeah yeah that'd be fun why are you looking at them because they're out what do you mean anyone is looking at them that's because <laughs> Practically uncovered. I'm gonna look. Oh, I kind of I look at things, but I'll be honest with you. I don't care about how people look. Generally, you know, if someone's got like blue hair, I'm not bothered. If someone's got. It doesn't matter, I don't care how big someone's head is or if their ears are 
sticking out and knocking people over in the street because they're so sticky out. I don't care about that. I don't, it's, it, things like that, how heavy someone is or how fat or skinny or any of those words that we're not supposed to use anymore. I just, it doesn't interest me. Because what does it matter? I've actually got a friend who's I've got to be careful what I say when I talk about friends tonight, in case they listen to this. But this friend is like I can't <laughs> can't say it. But this friend is someone that you would look at. It's female, female friend. And you'd look at her. And some people would look. People do. And I, I'm not really... I don't really like it. Because some, the way people look and... I don't think she notices. But they kind of... Look in a... Judgmental kind of way. Kind of, you know. And... Yet the ironic thing is... She does the same to other people. You know, she saw we saw a bloke wearing a dress and makeup, and yeah, had a beard and everything. You know, it was, it was a man, and not that all you know, just because someone's got a beard means they're a man. But I think there's got to be a point where we say, let's generalise on this one. Um, and she was like, like it shocked her, like completely threw her off her whole thought process. And I was like, what? Well, what does it matter? Who cares? And I think that's the thing. If you live in a big city, which I don't now, but I used to, I used to live in London, and you kind of see. It's not that you see everything, but you see a lot more than you'll ever see in a little village or a little town. You'll just see stuff. You'll see behaviour that perhaps you kind of get used to. It doesn't phase you. And... Uh, Although I was a little bit, I think I've only been, not shocked, but surprised, a little bit surprised three times since I've lived here, or since I've moved away from London. One was during the World Cup, and Spain were playing England, and I was in the town centre, I think I was on the way to the Buddhist centre or something. And, you know, all the pubs were full of English fans. And the streets were full of English fans. And they were sitting out, you know, on tables outside the clubs and bars drinking. And, you know, this is before the match started. The match was starting at maybe 7.30. And this was probably 6 o'clock in the evening. It's really busy. And one solitary man walking down the road on his own with a Spanish flag draped around him, like kind of a, a Spanish Superman, but that's afraid of heights, so he's walking instead of flying. And I was shocked, kind of, not just in a kind of caring way, thinking that it's not a good idea to do that in a town like where I live. Because you can kind of get away with that in London because it's such a multicultural place. 
and there's probably hundreds of thousands of Spanish people living there, if not more. But where I live, there's probably about six Spanish people live here. It might be more, I'm just guessing. It might be 60, might be three, it might be one, maybe there's none now after that. And I wanted to go up to him and say, listen mate, have you considered going home? Not that any, I didn't mean like go back to Spain, I mean just, you consider just like going home and watching a match there because I could, it's like you know you see the movies see the old movies the westerns where the stranger walks into the bar or the saloon and there's someone playing music and they're all laughing and stuff and suddenly everything goes quiet it was just like that The person on the piano stopped playing. Uh, the prostitutes just like stopped doing what they were doing. Everyone was just staring. And I thought, ooh. And I left. Not, not the town. But I thought, ooh, I'm getting out of here. I don't know what happened, but yeah, afterwards, but I was left. The second out of three, the second one is, I don't know what the correct term for this is. But, and someone walked down the street lunchtime you know it's, it's busy and this man is tall uh, very muscular and the reason I say he's muscular is because what he was wearing showed off his muscles he was basically wearing rubber like a rubber suit and there's a correct term but it's like a kind of like a bondage suit that you, you know, and a mask, and he had a ball in his mouth. He was in a like a strap, and but he was walking down <laughs> down the street in broad daylight when I'd expect to see something like that. In well, I'd expect to pay, you know on entry to some kind of dungeon facility and I couldn't figure it out I thought I mean he was a big muscular man you could, well basically you could see everything um, I was going to say you could tell his religion but uh, it was very tight everything he was wearing was very tight so he had like an amazing body and he was just it's kind of like I guess how Batman would want to look oh, not with all the, like the mask and stuff but physically how Batman would want to you know like a proper superhero and um, I'm going to be excited aren't I I just, just oh, oh, I need to question myself and uh, and he just walked past me. I think he might have winked at me, but it was hard to tell because he had a mask on. And people just stopped and just looked at him. It's like literally, it was just, even me, who likes to think I'm not interested in what people are, wearing or anything like that there's even a you know even for me there's there's a point where I do look and it was just 
it was brilliant really but I couldn't figure out what it was what, not what it was but what what the purpose was because I'm pretty sure now I'm not an expert on bondage or any of those kinds of things but I'm pretty sure someone is not you know in the middle of a bondage session and their partner says oh my god we've run out of milk can you pop down the supermarket and they you know one of them just goes well you've got to untie me first but just you know it's not it's not general shopping attire although it was rubber like a tyre and so that kind of threw me off a little bit so I thought you know what we've got internet now I'm going to research this because I remember in the past you know in the 90s the 80s I'd think to myself so if that had happened I think I'm going to research this but we don't have any internet yet used to bug me but now that we do and it turned out he was doing it as a charity like as a to raise awareness for something some charity because people would take pictures of him and it had become this uh, the rubber man was back and he travel all over Essex. I don't know if he's still doing it, but good luck to him. I went onto his Facebook and he refused to meet me, but you know, it's okay. And the next one, well, he blocked me on Facebook, but that's a different story. The next one, I was at a train station. I'm not sure what day it was. It was. I think it was, it might have been a Saturday or it might have been midweek. But it wasn't busy. But the other side of the platform, there was a man dressed up in similar attire, but not as kind of, not as well prepared. You know, he didn't have any shoes on, and he had like a bag. Like I think it was a plastic, uh, like a brown bag over his head. And I was concerned because. It wasn't a warm day and you know you need to keep your feet covered so I spoke to one of the people that works at this train station and I said there's a man over there and he's got no feet on. not not no feet he's not got no shoes on and the the board you know whoever the person was says well, I'm just here to clean the toilets. What are you telling me? I said, you work here though, don't you? He said, well, not really. I'll, I'm contracted. It's a different company altogether. But I do clean the toilets at the station. I said, so there's no point you telling me this then, is there? And he said, you can tell me. I mean, you know, I don't get many people talk to me. It's quite nice to have a break. And uh, I said, well, I didn't realise you were cleaning the toilets. He said, well, what did you think I was doing? I said, I don't know. I just figured you were just hanging around in the toilets. I don't know. Just I thought maybe it's a new service for people that had maybe difficulty undoing their zips or something. I don't know. He said, that's a bit weird, isn't it? I said, yeah, I know, I just 
couldn't think what else to say. He says, you know, you don't have to always fill gaps with sound. I said, what? He said, you don't have to always talk. You know, sometimes you can just leave a gap. You can just be quiet and it can be a beautiful thing. I said, yeah, but I'm making a podcast. I can't just leave a big gap of saying nothing. He said, oh, you're that bloke. I said, what? You're that bloke that makes those those silly podcasts. I said, what do you mean, silly? What do you mean, podcast? What do you mean, silly? He said, yeah, you make those silly podcasts for people. I said, well, I don't really think they're silly. I think they're pretty damn wonderful. He said, yeah, that's what you think, but has anyone ever used that word in describing them? I said, maybe. I'm not sure. He said, exactly. I said, what do you mean exactly? He said, maybe. He said, maybe. Yeah. What was the point of this conversation? All I was asking you is, did you see the bloke across the platform? Because he's got no shoes on. And he said, yeah, I know, but I've already told you, I don't work for the train station. I am contracted by a cleaning company. What do you want me to do about it? I said, to start with, I'd like you to correct your attitude. Did you just pronounce attitude, attitude? No. I think you did. Say attitude. Attitude. You do, you pronounce it wrong. It's not attitude, it's attitude. It's T, not ch. It's not attitude, it's attitude. Listen, I don't think you're in a position to correct the way I speak. What, because I clean toilets? No. Well, why then? I said I'm not sure. I was hoping I'd come up with something, but um, once you mentioned the toilet bit, it sounds a bit like I'm being a bit judgmental. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, but I can't really be judgmental about people that clean toilets because I've done lots of cleaning jobs myself. I know what it's like to clean a toilet. I've cleaned thousands and thousands of toilets, or a few toilets thousands of times, whichever way you look at it. He said, oh, I feel like we've really bonded now. Before, I just really didn't relate to you, but now that you've told me that you clean toilets, I feel a bond for life. You've been sarcastic. Yeah, I'm being sarcastic. Just because you clean toilets and I clean toilets doesn't mean we're kindred spirits. Oh, okay. I thought we were getting somewhere. Yeah, you know what thought did? Well, no, actually, I don't know. People have said that to me before. You know what thought did? What did thought do? I don't know. So why say it then? Just one of those things that people say, isn't it? Yeah, but why? I don't know. I mean, do you not think about the things that you say? Do you not actually, like, think, you know, think, think in your mind about the things, you know, the words, the meanings of 
the things that you say, the expressions that you make, the you know the regurgitation of something that someone else has said to you in the past, would you not want to understand what it was before you reused that phrase with someone else? What are you on about, mate? I'm just cleaning the toilets. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, I'm going to go. Uh, go on, give us a kiss before we go. All right then. Mwah. Speak to you later. So I went and found a different person, and it was uh, someone actually on the platform that I was on. Someone that worked there and had a whistle. Isn't it really weird? I don't know why it's gotten not relevant, but if you think back, and I think back to the 70s, now I used to travel around quite a lot when I was very little. And partly due to my mum's choice in boyfriends, but as we travelled around, so I remember getting onto trains, and I remember the smell of the trains. I remember being on the platforms and waiting and but there was that whistle. You'd always hear the whistle. And you know, the, the whistle per not the whistle blower, but the which is a weird term, isn't it? Someone's a whistleblower and it's kind of a negative connotation now, isn't it? I always thought a whistleblower is someone that blows a whistle. And the trains they blow the whistle to say Mr. Train Driver or Mrs. or Ms. or, or you know, Train Driver. You can go now. Whistle, whistle. Wee, wee. You can go. And they still do it. 40 odd years later, 45 years later, they're still doing it. The technology's increased. You know, trains practically drive themselves. And they still do the little whistle. I reckon that's what Star Trek should do. They should incorporate that. If Star Trek are going to be realistic, yeah, on the transporter deck, you know, where they transport to whoever's in Star Trek at the moment to you know the planet or to another ship someone should blow a little whistle first just to let everyone know it's all clear because that you know transportation with a transporter and beat me up Scotty instead of that it should be you know kind of a whistle that's me whistling I can't do a big whistle that would be a bit Imagine if I actually, I wonder why they've got peas in them. You know, the whistle for peas. I used to like whistles because you could like shake them around and they'd be a little pea. And I think, how did they get the pea in? Because the hole isn't big enough. Because I remember in this past, I've, I've got it in my hand and there's a hole at the top. And I've tried to get my finger inside the hole. And I've kind of pushed. But it's a little bit painful. It's like, oh, that hurts. And so I've got to bring my, pull my finger out of it. Because like, oh, that hurts. It's hurting me. And because it hurts a finger. Because it's the metal, the metal, little, little metal entrance. Well, even if it's plastic, it's still... But like, how did they get that little pee inside the hole. I guess it's the pee hole, isn't it? So trying to get your finger inside the pee hole is very difficult because the pee hole isn't really big enough for you to get your finger in. I'm really pleased with that. I'm just going to tell you that I am. Oh dear. So...
person I spoke to on the train platform and I said there's that man over there and he's got no shoes on it's cold I'm not sure how cold because I'm wearing socks and shoes but you know and I'm not prepared to take them off just so I can gauge how he would feel because I wasn't that interested and she said well that's a bit rude isn't it I said no you know isn't that a bit you know uncompassionate do you mean incompassionate I said no uncompassionate yeah maybe that's the word I don't know in is it incompassionate or uncompassionate since she went to a radio she said Jim it's Eileen here to Jim's on the other radio yeah hello what's up she said is the phrase is it incompassionate or uncompassionate he said I don't care Eileen said what Jim just just help us out here we are I did I did an extra shift for you last week I'm just asking for your help Jim said okay wait a sec I'm in the office so I'll just go online and find out and Eileen said to me you heard that didn't you he's he's going to get back to me I said well thanks Eileen she said how do you know my name I said I'll let you into a little secret you're wearing a name tag she said no I'm not I said that's true she, I said I heard you he called you Eileen on the on the radio and I thought no wait a minute I'll backtrack no it's because I have the gift the gift of names remember years ago 1995 I think it was and I never I don't know why I could meet someone and the person can be the most uh, let's just say interesting person like really someone that I perhaps like or would get to know or whatever and they'll tell me the name and I'll forget it instantly it's it's like they just told me that they used to have a, a pet rabbit called Boris when they were six and I was like oh that's information to let go I don't need to know that and or it's kind of I could be talking to someone for maybe an hour and then they mention oh yeah my boyfriend uh, did this and I, uh, I hear the word boyfriend and I instantly forget everything that's been talked about you know it's that kind of situation like I don't need to remember any of that now and <laughs> it sounds bad doesn't it and uh, with names I'm like that I just even if I like the person friends or whatever I just forget their name I've actually forgotten people's name when they had the same name as me now that's that's weird isn't it I mean, there's one of my favourite, well, a boxer that I really like, but I can never remember his name. And the weird thing about it is his name is Andre. It's a name I should remember. And I've got my little boy's called Andre, isn't he? So it's like, ah. Uh. Anyway, I remember I woke up one morning in bed with a lady 
1995 or whenever it was and I was saved by her uniform I was saved by her uniform because um, she had to go to work and her uniform was actually on a coat hanger on the back of the door facing outwards so the front of the uniform was facing out so I could see her name tag and it was just and it was weird because you know I just automatically forgot her name but because I do everybody it wasn't it wasn't like a personal thing I just don't it's not that I forget I just don't remember it's it's not even so much the it goes in one ear and out the other it, there's suddenly a big drawbridge comes up to the ear that is near and it doesn't let it in and I don't know why and um, it's like this little artillery just yeah I think it's like my ears have got these this little army of people with bows and arrows and whenever a, a name is mentioned and it comes towards my ear the bow and arrows shoot the name out of the sky very very strange I don't know why and on this occasion she actually pulled me up because she's one of these people that kept saying my name like why do you keep saying my name I'm the only one here who else would you be talking to unless you're talking to the goldfish you know but she kept saying Jason this Jason that's right Jason like I know my name you know it took me a while to learn it but I, you know but she's I said alright then mate alright then fella alright then chap and in the end she said you don't know my name do you you don't remember my name I said of course I do geezer she said you don't remember my name I said come on man I do of course I do don't be silly she said you don't know my name do you I said come on Kipper she said what I said Kipper she said that's not my name I said no I know but I call everyone Kipper that's what I called me the Kipper Man. She said, I can't believe you remember about the Kipper Man. I was like right at the beginning of the recording and you managed to bring it up right at the end and like mix it in with the ending of the recording. That's quite clever. I said, I oh, know, I really do feel good about that. It doesn't happen very often. It's almost like it's prepared, but it isn't. She said, yeah, I'm really pleased with that myself. I think, uh, I think I'm think i going to reward you. I said, well, you're going to stop talking. <laughs> she laughed, thinking I was joking. And um, she said, so if you know my name then, what is it? And she's standing facing me, but she's got her back to the door. And I can't see the badge because her head's in the way. I didn't mention she had like a really, really large head. It was probably four times the size of a normal head. But it's okay. Because I don't judge people on what they look like. No, she didn't. She had a normal size head. Just just a head. It's, that wouldn't bother me. I didn't I never I never measured a person's head. 
So I don't know what what's average size, and I don't care. But anyway, I said, "Oh, look at that!" Actually, what I said to her is, "Can you do the river dance?" And she said. Mm, I suppose so I'm never very much good at swimming I said no, no, no no, the the river dance the the Irish dancing you know when you kind of it's mainly lower body the, the, the dancing is lower body but the upper movements is your upper body but you kind of it looks like you're sort of standing still but you're not but you're moving she said, oh, with that description, I think I could do it easily. I said, great. So she gave it a go. It looked like an ostrich doing hopscotch, playing hopscotch, but it's fine. It looked like, she looked like she was an ostrich. Um, big-headed ostrich but she managed to move to one side and I got to see her name tag and I said and she said again so what's my name then I know what your name is I remember it no you don't yes I do no you don't yes I do what is it then I said it's McDonald's And I felt good about myself because I knew, I knew I caught her. I got her, caught her out. It's not always about being right, but sometimes being right feels right. And she gave me the look, that look that I've seen many times. It usually means get out. That was it. That was the the whole story of that. And I'm about to walk out, and she said, "Wait a minute, before you go." I said, "Yeah." Did you find out if it's uncompassionate or incompassionate? <sighs> I said, "Okay, well, oh, I don't know." Said, well, you need to finish that story. I said, I don't always finish stories. Sometimes I start and I forget and I move on to something else. And she said, yeah, but it's nice to have an ending, isn't it? I said, what, what are you talking about now? She said, sometimes, I'm not talking about last night particularly, but sometimes it's nice to have an ending. Sometimes it's nice for something to be finished. Sometimes when something's started, it's nice for it to be finished. You know what I mean? I said, all right, I'll talk about the story then. So, Eileen gets a, a thing we call call her back from whatever his name was on the other end. And he says, Eileen either... And he said, yeah, I'm here. He says, I'm not sure. So said, well, how come you're not sure? Didn't you check it? He said, uh, no. Why didn't you? He said, because the internet's down. Oh, okay. Are you sure the internet's down or is it just because Jason doesn't actually know which is right so he can't kind of end the story because he's not sure if he's incompassionate or uncompassionate because he doesn't actually know therefore he can't finish the story because it wouldn't be right if it's not correct he said yeah I think that's it and he said another thing remind Jason to 
mentioned the bloke at the other side of the platform without his shoes on. And that was kind of the whole point of this. I said, oh, okay, I will. Love you. Love you too. Bye. <laughs> yeah, so the man across the, on the other platform, he hasn't got any shoes on. Um, not sure what you want to tell us, isn't it? I said, yeah, I know. I'm just worried about him. She said, why? Why, why? why worry? And I thought, oh, that's a point. I haven't thought about that. Yeah. I think that's my train. I should might get on that now. She said, all right, see you then. I said, bye. She called me back. She said, are you really going to end it on that? I said, what do you mean? She said, I know this is like boring, it's supposed to be a boring recording, but that's a real quite boring ending, isn't it? Yeah, but it's a boring story. Yeah, I know, but it's like a non-ending. Oh, it doesn't have to be anything, does it? Just It just is what it is. Oh, okay, fair enough. Well, see you later then. Yeah, bye. Bye. And remember, be kind to yourself. Yeah, you too. Bye. Oh, by the way, before I get on the train, are you going to be the one doing the whistle? She said, yeah. I said, what's it like? She said, it's great. You know, people have been doing these whistles for years and years and years. You know, I was just saying to my friend in the office the other day that uh, if Star Trek was actually correct, they'd be using the whistle. And I said, that, uh, you were talking about a transporter system, aren't you? And the whistle before that. She said, yeah, how did you know? I said, no, we've already done that. I want to go now. Bye. Oh, okay then. See ya. The end.